last day of winter. It's 28th of February. This is my third, well, hopefully it'll be my third snowy walk of the winter. Hopefully up to the top of Benavurd. It's a big Munro. Wonderful big old pines. It's part of the attraction of this part of the Cairngorms and well, the Cairngorms generally, but the the glens are full of these old stands of, uh, of pine. Uh, remnants of a much greater forest from a bygone era. Well, there's a view opening up again now. Uh, Benavurd is up here in this cloud. It's looking fairly promising, taking that as a benchmark. But if the last two weeks have told me anything, it's well, the last two walks, it's that what's forecast doesn't always turn out that way. So hopefully it will clear. It'll be a bit disappointing to have had a third walk in succession promised blue skies and to not get it so I'm hoping it's gonna be third time lucky well I've managed to cross the river and now I'm just trying to oh, find somewhere suitable to leave my bike can't imagine you really need to lock your bike up up here but no just discourages opportunists, I suppose. I can't believe there'd be anybody out here who would do that, but uh, you never know, so better safe than sorry. I can't imagine anything worse than getting back here with weary feet and then finding that your bike's gone. But um, even though the sun's out, the weather, it's not looking great actually, and a few of the tops are still in clouds, so I think what I will do, I'll go the other way around, the longer way around, which is the way I was gonna come down. So I'm gonna go up my down route, which takes me into the next glen over there, and will take me up towards the Sneck, which is the the pass between Benavert and Benarn. It is very, very beautiful out here in the, in these pine forests. Something you don't tend to get on the west coast. You don't get uh, this mix. It tends to be on the right on the west coast. It tends to be sort of old oak forests, especially down in Argyll. Very, very wet here where it's a bit more sandy soil it's drier all these old pine forests are still here and it's very very it almost feels sort of primeval in a way you sort of you do feel a long way from anywhere it's nice If when I get to the pass, the Sneck, uh, it looks like it's still a bit not really worth going up to the tops, then I will at least have had a walk through a pine forest, seen the quarries, been in the grand scenery over there, and I can just walk back again. If I'd have gone that way round, the way up, straight up, as I planned on doing, and then found out that the weather's just a bit grim, Turning back would have just meant I'd just got a, a slog up in cloud and not really had the best of what around here has to offer. So I think it's just a better way to do it anyway. It's funny how even despite some of the weird gnarled shapes of these trees and the fact you've got plenty of dead ones stood around, I still find these Scots pine forests uh, very friendly places even in the thick of midwinter there it's always if you've been up on the high tops and you come down into one of these forests it always feels safe in a way that some other forests don't certainly plantations which the, what the great big forests of spruce and everything that are planted all over Scotland all over the hills, they very, very sort of dark, dank, forbidding places. Uh, 
that don't really give you any sense of comfort. And it's always, if I have to go through those, it's always with a, a weird sense of apprehension. But coming through these ones, for some reason, I just don't get that feeling at all. It feels very, very safe and protected and friendly for some reason. I think maybe it's because it's so, there's so much light, natural light coming through. And the fact that it's so dry, as I say, these forests are here because it's, it tends to be quite a dry soil. Scots pine don't like waterlogged soil. Uh, so it tends to be a more pleasant experience walking through pine forests because they're drier things, they don't tend to be so boggy. Anyway, I'm going to be pulling out of the main body of the forest now. There you go, it's looking distinctly like somewhere in Scandinavia or something now, or Iceland. seem to be getting brighter. Certainly more sunny intervals now than there were just half an hour ago. Look, there's the sun. Oh, please, please, please. Just rather annoyingly, the path is where all the snow's accumulated and I'm occasionally sinking. Well, so that seems to be holding, but every now and then I'm going down this. Oh, there we go. Down to my knees sometimes. It's painfully slow going. Just sinking every third or fourth step. That's fine. Doesn't matter if it's a bit slow because it's all still in cloud up there. It seems to be clearing just about everywhere else, but <laughs> here's being stubbornly cloudy. I'm not all that hopeful anymore, I don't think. I think it possibly will clear later in the day, but I can't hang around here waiting for it to do that. So I'll see what it's like. I'm going to get round up to the pass. Ugh, it's energy sapping. It holds your foot for all of a quarter of a second, then it, that's it, you sink. It's all right if it's consistent and you're expecting it, but you're, all your weight's balanced, thinking it's going to hold, and then it gives, and it's just... Ugh. So now snowing. Well, this is very welcome shelter. This is, even though the wind's gusting all the way around it, this is the clergyman's stone. The snack. Pass is up there. The reason I was going to go up there if I got this far and I wasn't going to go up there, I'd go up there if I knew I might get a view up the way into uh, Sloch Moor. There's a big uh, sort of glen, a sort of a narrow, long glen, a very impressive glen the other side. But uh, I'm not going to get a view of that today. So uh, I think I'll probably just make that do. I think I'll sit here, put some more warm clothes on, have my Millionaire shortbread, reward myself with a cup of tea and uh, probably just start back. Well, I'm fed and watered. I have every single layer I've got with me on. And I'm quite cold. I'm not going to sit here much longer. I'm going to go very, very shortly. Uh, so there we have it, three out of three, the three good days I've 
you know, to take advantage of. Ben Wivis, Ben Racky and Ben Avu. And they've all been a bust, I suppose. They've all been they've all been <laughs> they've all been satisfying in their own ways. It's, it's always nice to be outdoors and outside, especially it's always nice to be in the snow and in grand intimidating scenery and surroundings like this. But I can't deny I am very, very disappointed. Uh, I thought about being uh, annoyed for a moment, but there's no point in being annoyed. You know, the weather doesn't answer to anybody, it's just, it just is. It's just, just one of those things. We've just had a shocking winter with very few windows of opportunity for good sunny, snowy walks. We just haven't had any high pressure really at all. We get the occasional ridge in between low pressure systems, but that's all we get at best. And that doesn't guarantee calm conditions, sunshine, and cloudless summits. So uh, here, this is, good, this is as good as you can hope for. Here I am on a good day. Alright, so time to peer around the stone and see what weather we're going to have on the way back. Oh, it's cold. It's quite incredible how much water. I mean, I'm baking hot again now. I'm going to have to take a couple of layers off. But just from coming, just from coming down there, clergyman stones just around the corner. It's like uh, it's like any glen, really. It's a bit of a wind tunnel, and as the land gets higher up the glen, and the glen gets narrower, it just funnels all that wind. You've got to take it rough with the smooth, I suppose, haven't you? It's, We want blanket blue sky all the time. Sounds nice, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Uh, when we get a really good day with blue skies and sunshine, it seems so much more amazing than it probably is because they're so rare. <sighs> I haven't had one since November, and I'm still waiting. It's March tomorrow. First day of spring. I might not have got to the top of something, but I mean, it's still fantastic. This, I mean, look, it's just, it's humbling. There's nothing, there's, there's nothing, there's nobody. I haven't seen anybody. Even coming on the bike this morning, I haven't seen anyone. It's just red grouse, that's it. That's all there is, and a few deer prints and a bit of deer poo. So, it's funny, sat up there behind the stone, tempting to sort of feel despondent and disappointed, and then trudging up there when I was going through the snow, which was giving way all the time, you start to think, am I actually having fun? Am I enjoying this? And it does get borderline sometimes. <laughs> and you think, why on earth am I doing this? But then uh, every single time I get home, I mean, I'm, I'm always elated for being out. It doesn't matter that you didn't get to the top of something or you didn't get to do what you intended to do. It's still just the most stunning, stunning landscape to immerse yourself in. But you can see how intimidating it is and how prone to sudden changes in weather and how different it can be from what you thought was forecast or what you saw was forecast. It's um, it's not for everyone. I know not everybody enjoys coming into wild places like this. I know some people sort of get quite freaked out by it and then it's, and do feel very, very 
vulnerable. Um, and you are, because you are very, very vulnerable, sat out here. Um, anything could happen, really, I suppose. So, and to seeing this all open like this and not having seen anyone and feeling very, very far from anywhere, it just, it just brings it home, really, how, uh, how lucky we are to have this and how, uh, how remarkable it is. So, yeah, I'm feeling, suddenly feeling boosted again. Yeah, I'm enjoying myself again. I wasn't when I was trudging up there, but now I am. It's just so peaceful. It's quite nice with the snow just falling. Sanctuary of the forest again. Yeah, it's nice. It's uh, welcoming. <laughs> I think I can hear black grouse. There's something up there. A kind of a cooing noise. Yeah, it was black grouse up in a tree. They're up there. Well, that's good, I haven't seen black grouse for a very long time. Wonderful big old trees. With that scaly bark. Oh, the beautiful trees. It's a whole world away from up at the stone, and I can feel my legs shivering. It's like spring down here. Well, the bike's still here. Oh, of course it's still here. Of course it's still here. Time for tea and cake. And then the trundle back, which hopefully most of it should be downhill. Just check in case the tyres are flat. That did happen to me last time. The path I came in on is, is up there. And that's another path. It forms a great big loop with the track on either side of the river as, it, as, it, as the river flows out back to my lodge. But uh, there's a river crossing over there that I'm not sure. Oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? It looks eagle like. It's enormous, whatever it is. Are you? Well, that was definitely an eagle. Just enormous. Because uh, it flew in that general direction and then I didn't see it come out anywhere, so it must be somewhere up there still. So I'm just going to hang around a bit and just see in case it takes to the air again. Anyway, as I was saying, if I take that road there, there's a river crossing which, by all accounts, when it's anything other than really, really low, it's nigh impossible to cross. So I'm not going to risk it, I'm just going to go back the way I came because that avoids that river crossing. It'd be a bit of a pain in the ass to get all the way down there and then have to come all the way back again. Uh, it's not going to, not going to fly. Can't stand here all day waiting. As much as I'd like to. Eagle and black grouse, not bad. Oh, I spotted our eagle again. There's trouble of finding it though. Where are you? There. There you are, unmistakable. A 
I say are mistakable, but they are of course very mistakable. It can be hard to tell the difference between a golden eagle and a sea eagle. But if you're unsure, the location tends to give it away. We're a long way inland here, about as far from the sea as you can get in Scotland. And we're in mountainous country, so uh, with open moors. So that tends to tell you it's a golden eagle. But, uh, probably the most common misidentification I think, with eagles is uh, with the buzzard, which is a much smaller bird. But even so, some buzzards can get quite big, so you can understand why they get mixed up. Oh, I need a tripod. Stop all this wobbling. Golden eagles tend to have smaller heads in relation to their bodies than buzzards do. And uh, eagle wingtips have that really distinctive finger-like feathers on the end of their wings. Um, just like fingers. Buzzards just don't have that. At least not as pronounced as that. Oh dear, it's always a privilege to see one. Amazing. Not bad footage really for a tiny little camera. Handheld. Lost it now. Ending a day in sunshine, kind of. But the hill, you can see it over there, right in the distance, is still in cloud. So it's brightened up over here, but not over there.